In this one, I get to show you the difference between osteopenia, normal bone, and osteoporosis. But before we go there, here's what I want you to do first. I want you to really zero in on what normal bone looks like. Now take a look at that tissue. See, we have your hip bone over there, right? We've got the femur head. That's what we're gonna pretend we're just zooming in on. So that's why you see the small circle with a line to the bigger circle. Now take a look at that tissue. How would you describe it? This is a close up version of your bone tissue. Normal bone, we would say it's dense, right? You see kind of that spongy like look, but the holes are very small and in overall that tissue looks pretty dense and strong. Like it could support the human body. That's what normal bone should look like. Now I want you to move over to osteoporosis, right? Right, just skip osteopenia, go right to osteoporosis. Wow, look at that. You could not call that dense, right? It kind of looks real lacy, but it sure doesn't look strong. And this is why osteoporosis is a problem. Looking at the normal bone, yes, we have holes, but it's still pretty dense and looks strong. They're smaller holes. Look over at osteoporosis, that is scary. Think if that's what your bone looked like that was supporting your body weight. That's a scary deal. So osteoporosis is what we're trying to avoid and prevent. How do we do that? Identify it early, know who's at risk, and osteopenia right in the middle. Now take a look. Compare it to osteoporosis. It's not as bad as osteoporosis, but now compare it to normal bone. Yeah, it's definitely not as good as normal bone. So this means this is someone whose bones are already a little weaker than they used to be. So we wanna make sure we recognize that early and we help the patient get the appropriate treatment. So when you recognize someone's having risk factors for osteoporosis, their DEXA scan shows that they're in osteopenia, then this is a client that we need to closely monitor and make the appropriate recommendations for their healthcare treatment. Now this is the fun part. I know, I'm a nerd. You're not gonna think this part is fun, but I do. Hey, the next gen stuff that's coming, this is gonna be a time when you guys get to really show how your studying and hard work in nursing school pays off. So this is kind of a big old thing, right? There's a lot there. But when we're talking about through these videos and through these concepts, here's where it's gonna pay off for you. See down there at the bottom where it says, recognize cues and analyze cues. And the goal is to form a hypothesis when you're making clinical judgments. Bada boom, bada bing, we got it for you here. So let me show you how you can do that with this particular topic. I want you to recognize the type of cues you should be looking for. And when you see them, know, aha, I need to start putting these together or analyzing these cues so I can form a hypothesis, an idea of what is, what is difficult, challenging, or maybe wrong or unsafe for this patient. So let's look at a normal vertebra first, right? Let's look at healthy bones. Look at the normal vertebra. They have a normal curvature. They look strong and firm, as far as you can tell in this picture, and you have normal bone structure. Look at that femur, looks nice and dense, excellent. The cues I'm gonna be looking for is something that's different than normal. That's why it's so important in nursing school that you always know what normal is. Know what the healthy bones or normal are, then when you see something different from that or abnormal, that tells you, ah, these are cues I should be recognizing. How can I think about them and analyze to identify what I think might be wrong with the patient? So I can collaborate with both the patient and the healthcare provider to get this patient the best level of care. So look at the healthy bones. Now let's look at the osteoporotic bones. Look at the vertebra. Look at how the spine is now shaped. That curve is more pronounced. And you know when it gets really severe, they're hunched over. So bones with osteoporosis, you're gonna see physical changes externally. They may suffer from a hip fracture. Remember, they may break bones earlier. They may complain of back pain or hip pain. Those are all cues we want you to look for with your patients and on your exam questions, just to be aware of what you'll be looking for.
all right, I showed you the model, right? Looks kind of intimidating, but don't be impressed by that. I promise that model is just a way of writing down how good, excellent nurses think when they interact with a patient. So how do you take this information and make sure that you're ready to be tested on it and to prepare to perform excellent patient care? Well, we know what normal is. We see what abnormal is. So how could they use this abnormal information to ask us a question? Well, you may see in the STEM, they say you have an elderly client who has a family history of osteoporosis, has been complaining of back pain for the last four months. Which of the following diagnoses would you expect to see? Which of the following exams would you expect the healthcare provider to order? You are presented with an elderly client who is complaining of hip pain and back pain. The client has been previously diagnosed with osteoporosis. Which additional clinical signs and symptoms would be consistent with the diagnosis of osteoporosis? And they'll list several symptoms and see if you can pick those out. So you getting it? Yeah, the, when you're studying, you make up your own questions. Now, I know that's sometimes hard to do, which is why we do it for you, right? There's questions after each one of these videos. Stay on those. Keep answering them. That's going to help you be a rock star and prepare for those cumulative exams in your courses and the NCLEX. Answering questions is the magic of learning science. You quizzing yourself, having to try to pull the answer out of your own brain is what works. Don't look up the answers. Don't look up your notes. Try to answer those questions first. Guys, highlighting doesn't cut it, right? That is not a guarantee that you've learned something. Writing out a thousand of your own note cards, that doesn't do it. What you need to do is quiz yourself, ask yourself questions, use our resources, and make questions up on your own. Quiz each other in a study group. But even if you don't have a really good study group, we'll be that study group for you. So good luck as you're taking this information to learn how to keep a patient safe and do well on your exams.